So I've been making a few projects recently with external crystals, experimenting really. I mean, mainly because the timing for uh, an internal uh, crystal in AVR is not always that accurate for some projects. These type of external ones, there, what is that? That is a 16 megahertz, presumably. Uh, and so all sorts of different flavors. That's also 16. Hmm, that's actually labeled 16. This one is 16. Okay, so I thought this was an assorted packet. That is, oh, that is 20. And this one is 16. And so on and so forth. I think I'll be using eights recently. That's a four. So yeah, I've got all these different types and uh, not really sure about how accurate they are. Really, the only thing I can do is build a clock and uh, and watch it change over time and then maybe fix it up from, from there. So, um, a while ago I ordered this kit and it's supposed to be, I think, a kit that will measure the frequency of an oscillator. So, let's just open it up and see what it is. There is a well stuck chip in it. Oh my gosh. That is, that's been brutalized uh, in the... Um, process of getting it from China to Tasmania. It is a PIC. Um, so I can't quite read that. PIC 16F628A. I don't have any experience with PIC, so I'm assuming that it is pre-programmed. And then we've got, there's a power jack there. There is actually a crystal in there, presumably that's used as a reference. So who watches the watcher? Um, that is 20 megahertz, and uh, that's presumably where you put the IC in. There's a button, some capacitors. This one here looks like an adjustable capacitor, so I'm just going to just take that out. I'm assuming that, you know, if you do need to adjust, not such a bad idea really, that there is a capacitor in there for adjusting. Yeah, that one there, so that's actually uh, for adjusting, well, presumably, the accuracy, but again, who watches the watcher? Some diodes, some resistors, uh, and I guess a couple of transistors, it looks like. Can't quite see what they are. Let's have a little look. So that says that's an S9080, S90, sorry, S9018. Not really heard of those, but anyway. And uh, some capacitors, more resistors, uh, and some um, seven segment displays. So, and then we've got this PCB, which looks pretty well labeled actually. So um, yeah, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, I'll probably go into the, uh, the mode for time lapse and uh, put it together. And then we'll have a look at uh, testing these different crystals to just see how accurate they actually are. Well, you know, using this kit anyway. Okay, so in time lapse, uh, just starting by checking the 1K resistors that are provided. So, yep, they're uh, they're 1K. There's nine of them, and um, just placing all those first. Then I think there's a couple of 10Ks, and then there's a 100K. Uh, so uh, I'll bring the tester back for that just to make sure it's the right one in the right place. And I have changed my method for soldering through hole. Um, I used to bend the leads and then turn the board over and solder from underneath. Now I just tack one side from the top, uh, then turn the board, uh, solder the other side up and then go back and just go over the tacked side. It's, I don't know, it seems to be faster and easier. Uh, so that works out pretty well and I just cut those legs off the resistors and that is phase one the next part are the capacitors as a 102 104 there's actually three 22 picofarad uh, sorry uh, capacitors but I left with one over and cannot find where to put it which is always a worry but there are a couple of other worries with this kit which uh, we'll find out as we go through the build but uh, yeah, the capacitors, same method, uh, tack from the top and then turn over and, uh, 
and fix those soldering points up. Then there's the variable capacitor, which again I'm presuming is something to do with uh, calibration of the entire unit. And that's the 20 megahertz crystal going in as well. And uh, after cutting off the legs, that is phase two finished. All right, so I have put on the IC socket. Uh, I've just only tacked uh, one leg in. So um, and now I'm putting in the diodes and I'll turn the board over and um, do the entire socket. So that's just making sure that all of those are in and then we've got the diodes putting those in a little bit of cutting and that is phase three all right so just halting here to show you the solder wire wound around a pencil um, so that is how I just keep refilling up that little uh, solder uh, well it's it's supposed to be like just a little bit of solder but uh, when I run out I just refill it it's just a most convenient thing to do so there was a, uh, the other one of the other problems here was that um, the actual kit contains two transistors and a voltage regulator but I got three transistors so um, I'm able to solve that problem but uh, I guess if you didn't have a big um, bin full of parts that could be an issue while you're waiting for a replacement or finding a replacement uh, anyway, these are the seven segment displays, a fair bit of uh, bending of pins so that it all fits in. But then, um, yeah, it's quite satisfying to actually solder all of those in. So um, that's it. And then the last little bit of that, uh, they're quite short little legs really, but I, I didn't like to have them uh, hanging over. So then I just snipped off. And these are the sorts of short, sort of slightly wider legs that love to go flying across the room. So I just put my um, thumb over the top of that as well uh, while I just clip all of those off. And uh, that is pretty much it for phase four. Okay, so in the kit, there was supposed to be a, what is it listed as, a seven five five zero and but in fact uh, what was given was another thing which looks very similar but it's the same as this transistor here a 9018 so there's a 9014 transistor a 9018 and then a 7550 I'm assuming that that's an HT 7550 uh, and that regulates the 9 volts down to 5 for the pick uh, but it's an assumption and um, I don't actually have any 7550s but I do have a 7350. Now as near as I can tell the difference is that the 7550 regulates up to 100 milliamps and this one regulates up to I think it's 250 milliamps or 300 milliamps so basically um, should be the same. So I'm going to solder that up and uh, and then plug it in so let's do that. I'll do that one at normal speed because that is the last component to put in for this one and that sits in there nicely so we'll just turn that over and solder these legs in and we're good to go a little bit of snippy and I'm not really sure if this is all going to work after all of that but I'm not even sure what that button does actually. Probably should check on the internet, I guess, to find out what's going to happen. But let's just plug it in and see. And straight away a problem. That is a very interesting adapter. It's certainly not that adapter. All right, let's see if I can find an adapter that's going to suit that particular jack. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, so I've pulled the old jack out. There it is, desoldered and pulled it out, and put this ridiculously large one on. And I've had to butcher that uh, in order to actually match up 
So yeah, this will be interesting. So I'll just solder that in. And then we'll all enjoy plugging it in and watching it explode. Hopefully it should be okay. I checked the polarity, like the polarity of the smaller jack is the same as the larger one. Um, I mean, maybe I should spend a bit more time checking the barrels that I've got, but these are the most common nine volt barrel, so I'm not sure, I hope that's going to be strong enough, so I'm not sure what that would be, okay, so this would be the big unveiling, I guess, and it says, quit, well that's good, I don't know why it would say quit, but it says quit, and it says no PSU, add, sub, zero, Table, quit. Okay, let's go to quit. And it, I presume if you just let it sit for a bit, it will quit. Although it's not. Maybe you have to double click. Or hold, let's do that. If we click and hold, yeah, there you go, and out. All right, and then there's a little zero there because it can. Uh, so the next thing to do is to actually put a crystal in here. And I've got a lot, of, a lot of different ones here. So um, I'll put some crystals in there and we'll see that lighting is annoying. I'll fix the lighting up, I'll come back and we'll test some crystals. Okay, so I'm not saying that I know how to drive this any better, but um, let's just plug a couple of things in to see. So this says 16.000 on the label and we plug that in and it says it says it says you can't plug that in properly it's a bit fiddly from this angle ah, there we go so that's 16.066 i suppose you could take that into account if you uh, were making a project that needed a crystal, you know, with an exact frequency, then um, you could make the appropriate adjustment. This says 32.768. Presumably that's kilohertz, I'm guessing. We'll see what this makes of it anyway. And that says 32.834. So, and then it's all over the place. Oh, and back to 32.834. Okay, interesting. I think I've got some reading ahead of me on this one. And now it says quit because I accidentally pushed a button. Let's hold that down a bit more. All right, now we'll try. This one says 25. Twenty-five point zero six six. So I'm noticing that 0 0.66, I think. So maybe that's the adjustment that you can do with this capacitor here but then again like if you're adjusting to match something which you're trying to test yeah that's what i need to do the reading uh but look this whole thing was about actually putting this together um it's going to be a handy tester for frequency not necessarily for crystals but in fact even if you're just making like a 555 time and you just want to see what the frequency is um so i'll put a link in the uh description of where this came from and uh, perhaps also a couple of links to, um, well, if you could just go to the blog, actually, that's probably the easiest thing. And uh, on the blog, there'll be links to this, um, where I bought this from, and also to maybe a couple of descriptions of not just how you put together, but how you actually drive it with that, um, with that button. So that's the circuit working, and we will see you next time.